Dying can be easy. Living creatures are great at dying. Bringing you back to life, well, that's a bit harder. Yeah, just put the gumdrop statues over here, thanks. But before you're brought back from the dead, you have to be, well, dead dead. At different points in history, that dead dead marker has changed. That's right, as science progressed, so did our understanding of death. Oh, you're probably wondering why the set is very, um, land of candy chic. I thought if we had to talk about death, we should have the set be fun to offset the depressing nature of it all, but um, it kind of backfired and made everything really creepy. Uh, I can't return any of this though, so we're just powering through. Let's talk about death in this happy fun time episode of Life Noggin. Cue the adorable, not creepy intro. Hey there. Welcome to Life Noggin. The definition of death has changed over time as scientists and doctors have learned more about the human body. Originally, a person was declared dead when their heart stopped beating, which is now known as cardiac arrest and causes them to stop breathing. But without modern medical tools, it was difficult to determine if it was permanent. About 500 years ago, physicians dissected human bodies and studied their anatomy. Their work led to a better understanding of the causes of death, how it was due to a malfunction within the body rather than a curse from some higher power. But even a century ago, doctors were still struggling to determine if someone was dead or just in suspended animation. They developed all kinds of crazy tests to check for respiration and heartbeat. About 50 years ago, the definition of death changed. Instead of declaring someone dead when their heart and lungs stopped, which is now referred to as clinical death, death is considered to occur when the brain stops stops working, known as brain death. See, this is why I keep telling you guys to keep, keep on, on thinking. thinking. This change was the result of life-saving advances in medicine that proved that someone's heart and lungs could be revived through methods like CPR and defibrillation. But it has to happen quickly. Without a beating heart, your brain will run out of blood, which provides cells with the oxygen needed for them to function. Within six seconds of cardiac arrest, you'll lose consciousness. If the heartbeat isn't revived fast, brain cells will begin dying. This damage is irreversible. Studies have found that restarting the heart with a defibrillator within five minutes of cardiac arrest gives someone a 50 to 70% chance of survival, but their chances decrease 10% every minute afterwards. Even when someone's heart is restarted, they may still not regain consciousness. In these cases, doctors may lower body temperature in an attempt to save brain function by slowing metabolism and lessening inflammation. This is called therapeutic hypothermia and was introduced in 2002 after studies showed that the procedure led to significantly better long-term neurological outcomes. These interventions are for after cardiac arrest occurs, but researchers are developing AI models that can predict the future, at least in terms of your health. This includes models that can predict a cardiac arrest event before it happens, as well as ones that can predict or diagnose a wide range of other medical conditions and diseases so they can be prevented or treated right away. But if you're dying from an illness without a cure, some scientists think that they have another solution in the works, freezing your body and brain until doctors can heal you. This practice is called cryonics. As these new technologies are developing, so so are the ethical considerations surrounding death and revival, sparking questions like, is it okay to revive someone? How will their quality of life be altered? Should life support be used if there's no chance for recovery? But the biggest question is, does brain death truly constitute death? The definition has changed before, and as new technology is created, maybe it will again. Maybe one day, death will just be a temporary state rather than the final end. So what happy fun time topic should I talk about next? <laughs> Leave your sunshine filled questions down in the comments and tell me, what video should I make next? Click here to watch this video we did on regenerating like Deadpool and Wolverine, or click here to watch this video. Check out Lifespan, the team that powers Life Noggin. They're doing amazing work in fighting age-related diseases. Learn more in the description. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.